Hi, Christopher. Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. Three wins in as many races. It's really a pretty phenomenal thing. It really is. W what do you attribute it to, and how does that kind of put, you know, what you have to expect out of this week doing that? If you could just talk about that. Uh, yeah, it is a, a very special, um, special stat and special opportunity that I have in front of me to to try and make it four for four. So I, what I attribute it to is just great cars, great teams, great pit crews, great crew chiefs, and, and NASCAR racing in general is extremely hard because of how many people have influence on the result. So um, if one guy makes a mistake out of your entire team, then you're not gonna win the race. And three times it's happened where all of us pulled the rope in the same direction and, and, and nobody made a mistake. So. Uh, I understand that doing it for a fourth time is a tall ask, but I'm excited for the challenge. We don't talk about it as much, but would you consider it a pretty big accomplishment to have done that? I mean, in all that you've done, uh, still, I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. I, uh, I, I don't know, I, like, I don't think about it outside of one week a year, but um, that's something I'm certainly proud of. Bob? Bob Pockris, Fox Sports. Um, if, if practice and qualifying gets rained out tomorrow, are you good to go without practice here? Yeah, I, I think I, I would be probably in favor of that. I know the metric has us lining up fourth, um, and with how the flat tracks and the the short track package has been for our team, I feel like we would be you know really competitive right off the bat. So. Uh, got a great starting spot. More importantly, a great pit selection if it rains out. Um, but if not, you know, I'll, I'll obviously go out there and, and try and you know qualify for the polls. So uh, either way, I'm com completely content with. And are you aware of how they'll do things if it's if they're getting approaching darkness? Do you know about this new procedure uh, year, where they're going to tell you there's a time where we'll race to and then. Once the leader crosses the start finish line at that time, then the next time they come by is the white, and the next time they come by is the checkered. To alleviate the issue they had at um, Chicago, yeah. where and here, in you know where everybody so, had pitted. So I, I'm I curious. Try to pour salt on the wound, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Well I, well, I kind of feel like that maybe you're it, the prime. Yeah. It. It. I'm very, very glad that is that it is black and white now, and there is a rule in place. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just ironic, right? But at Chicago and at Loudoun, um, both times, I think those are the only two times in recent times that darkness has hindered the race. And it has, I've been like one of the, you know, the prime culprits of it. So uh, I'm very, very happy that there is a black and white rule now. And uh, it, yeah, it, it, it is nice to not have a guessing game. And um, now, now it is what it is. Uh, I mean, yes, I think either way is fine as long as you know it ahead of time. You know, like, um, as specifically at Chicago, the race strategy was heavily dictated on the race end lap, right? And, and guys in the back half of the field just took a 100% a gamble on what, they were, what NASCAR was going to do, and it rewarded them because they won on the gamble. And then the guys that were trying to race the race properly to the full distance got bit by it. So now, at least if that situation comes up, we will know that you know the race is getting white flagged at X amount of time, or X time on the clock, not amount of time. But yeah, I, I think having a black and white rule is, is always good. All right, in the back. Uh, Doug Rice, PRN. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, Terrell Cody with Portsmouth Herald. Uh, Christopher, just the, um, the level of success that you've had at this track, uh, how much confidence does that give you coming in here for this weekend uh, in, in that you can kind of put, put another one on the resume? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has me excited about the opportunity to, you know, continue my Xfinity streak, get another cup win. But I, I can't stress enough how hard it is to win any NASCAR race, just with everything that goes on the event, everyone has to do their job on the entire team. So while I do have confidence that we're going to show up and have speed and I'm going to be able to, you know, get around the racetrack at a good pace, 
uh, that that doesn't mean success by any means. So uh, I feel confident that we're going to be in contention and, and have a shot at it, but everything has to go right in order to win. Doug. So are you okay if this new darkness rule becomes known as the Christopher Bell rule? I would love that. <laughs> All right, right here. Uh, Pat Ticola, NASCAR.com. Where exactly do you fall in the leadership dynamic at JGR, and do you feel like you'll need to take on a bigger role next year with Martins? Uh, that's a good question. And honestly, I don't really know if there really is any leadership from the driver's standpoint. Um, you know, certainly whenever we get into our competition meetings, the, the, mo the more guys with experience will, you know, kind of, I guess, take the role a little bit in steering the ship as far as what we need in the race cars and stuff like that. Uh, and, and I have definitely grown, you know, in confidence telling the team what we need inside of our cars with experience. Uh, but, you know, week in and week out, a different guy may lead the lead the discussion, right? And, and every time we go into our Monday meetings, it's it, it, it could be whoever has a good race that week. So uh, plenty of times it's been Ty, plenty of times it's been Martin, it's been myself, it's been Denny. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think that there, there really is a, a, a leadership role in that as, aspect. Um, you know, and, and whenever Chase comes into the car, <laughs> Whenever, some, whenever, I don't even know what to say. Whenever we have a new driver into the 19 car, <laughs> whenever we have a new driver into the 19 car, whoever that is, <laughs> uh, their experience level will dictate how much input they have in the team. Well, we look forward to that. Thank you. Back up here to Holly. How to follow that. Um, I'll take it easy on you, though. My question to you actually was, and, it, and you may say you don't sense it at all, but there are a lot of uh, very accomplished drivers that have not necessarily secured their playoff position yet. Is this the time of year where you expect things to start cranking up a little bit and the racing to get a little bit more uh, you know, intense and things like that, or, or not quite yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely the time of year where people start, you know, thinking about the playoff positions. And if you look outside the cut line, it is very, very, very intense. And there's a lot of very talented cars, talented teams that are on the outside looking in. And uh, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle all the way to the end. And the more guys that win, you know, outside the cut line, it's just going to make it even tighter and tighter. All right, back here again. Uh, so now, racing on Saturday and Sunday, is there any real benefit when you come in Sunday now, or are the cars too different for that to, to make a big difference? Uh, and if, the, if it is too big of a difference, what is the value that you find in still coming down and, and racing the Xfinity races on these weekends? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the advantage from Saturday to Sunday is, is, is pretty much gone. You know, they're, they're, the cars are completely different. The shift pattern's different. The way that they react and... Uh, and corners is is it, it's it's completely almost irre irrelevant from Saturday to Sunday. So now it, it is just about enjoyment and track time, um, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's very hard to take anything from Saturday to Sunday. Do we have any final questions for Christopher? All right, thank you for your time. Good luck this weekend. Jared Haas with FrenchStretch.com. Come back soon for more great racing videos. And if you like us, make sure to hit that subscribe button.